Hello everybody and welcome to another photography tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how I set up my camera for wildlife photography. I'm going to give you the settings I choose in different situations. I'm going to show you how I focus and most importantly I'm going to show you which exposure mode that I choose. I'm quite old school when it comes to photography so I much prefer to use manual exposure as much as possible. Um, it's really good if you've got consistent lighting and you have the time to do it. So in those situations I'll pretty much always go for manual exposure and I like that because I have full control over all three parameters, the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. With birds and fast moving mammals I'll usually pick a shutter speed about 500th of a second, keep the aperture wide to throw the background out of focus uh, and then the ISO. I'll really I'll select the ISO to give me the other two parameters that I'm after whilst trying to keep it as low as possible. I'll probably have it on continuous shooting but I'll make the decision whether it's on a slower or faster rate depending what I'm photographing and quite often as well I'll actually take a test shot and then I'll review on the back of the camera also using the histogram. So the other exposure mode I like to use is aperture priority, which might be A or AV on your camera. And the reason for using that is that it just gives you a bit more speed. So quite often you don't have the time to change the settings on your camera manually. So that's why I think uh, aperture priority is absolutely perfect for walkabout. Um, you don't know what you're gonna come across and you just need that extra bit of speed. You very quickly take the shot and the exposure should be fairly accurate. So again, I keep it very simple with aperture priority. I'll pick a wide aperture, close to the widest aperture of the lens uh, to give me a fast shutter speed. And then the ISO, if it's fairly bright as it is today, certainly when the sun was out, uh, in that case, I'll usually pick the ISO manually, uh, which just coincides with a fairly fast shutter speed. Also, when I'm using aperture priority for walkabout photography, I'll keep it on a very fast continuous shooting rate because I don't know what I'm going to see and it might be something moving very quick, might be some action, I don't want to have to change to the highest shooting rate. So I'll keep it on a continuous frame rate all the time. This video is also part of the wildlife photography tutorial playlist. So if you have a look at that tutorial playlist on my channel, I'm sure you'll find lots of useful content in there. I said with aperture priority that I often use it with manual ISO, but there's a specific situation where I like to use aperture priority and automatic ISO together. And that's where I'm photographing in misty conditions, mist and fog. And that's often the case uh, many, many mornings over the past few years where I photograph by the water with that fantastic low level mist first thing in the morning. And I've developed a technique for exposure, the best way to expose in that situation. So what I do now, I use aperture priority with auto ISO. And the reason I like this technique with the auto ISO is because in the mist you get such a latitude, such a wide range of exposure. If you're shooting towards the sunrise through the mist then it's going to be very bright. If you turn in the opposite direction you're going to find the light levels are much lower and I don't know which direction I'm going to be shooting in. So using auto ISO just allows the ISO to fluctuate depending on where you're pointing on the different light levels and what I do as well is set a maximum. So I set a maximum ISO to 3200. Uh, I don't like to go above that on my Canon 1DX. So whatever happens it won't go above ISO 3200. The reason I like to use aperture priority rather than manual with the auto ISO, which I know some people like to do, uh, the problem with manual is if the light levels get too low and the camera reaches its highest ISO point, it has nowhere else to go and your picture just comes out underexposed. If you use aperture priority with auto ISO, then once it reaches your ISO limit, it actually defaults back to the shutter speed, or it does on my camera. It might not be the same on every camera, it depends what you've got, uh, but it defaults to the shutter speed, slower shutter speed, which still gives you an exposure rather than completely underexposed. 
Using this technique, I also select a minimum shutter speed, which is usually 1 500th or 1,000th of a second to go along with the auto ISO. And I also tend to add overexposure, often around plus two thirds or plus one in the mist. I find that gives me a more accurate exposure and it doesn't underexpose too much. In terms of focus, what I tend to do if I'm walking around, as earlier I was talking with Aperture Priority, then I'll definitely have it on servo, a continuous autofocus, because I don't know what's going to happen. And if I've got time, if I'm photographing a static animal or a bird on a perch, then I personally use the one-shot focus where I can just lock the focus and then recompose and fire. Uh, what I'd say is try and make sure you've got some system of a focus lock. And for a lot of people that's using back button focus. I don't like that myself. I'll put a link up to uh, what I do instead. But yeah, if you've got some way of locking the focus, then what that means is if you're, if you're tracking an animal or a bird in flight, when it stops and you want to recompose, you can do whatever you need to do with your thumb or your finger and uh, recompose the shot and then take your portrait. So a focus lock is a really useful thing. And then with focus points, my default is actually just to have one single focus point. When I'm walking around, that's what I do. Uh, if I have a bit more time then I may shift that to a single focus point off center for composition and really the only time that I change it to expand to more focus points is when I'm photographing birds in flight or occasionally moving animals. If you have the ability on your camera then it can be a really good idea to set up a custom shooting mode and what you do there is actually program it into the camera so you've got a few different options for different scenarios. So what I do, uh, very simple, I've just got three on this Canon. I've got C1, C2 and C3. I've actually programmed something in for each one and the C1 I've simply programmed for really for action. For birds in flight so what I've programmed that, pro, what I've programmed that to is uh, servo autofocus wide aperture f6.3 uh, ISO 1600 and I've kept the exposure compensation in the middle so if I just simply tap the button on my camera it will go straight to that uh, custom shooting mode it'll go straight to those settings then what I've also done on my camera because I do some video with it I've also set up uh, the C2 and C3 shooting modes are both set up for video so C2 I've got set up um, for 25 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 50th and then the C3 is set up for 50 frames a second with a shutter speed of a hundredth of a second. So they're both set up for video but they're both set up for different, uh, different frame rates to give different effects. If you want to see more photography tutorials then click the playlist up here. If you're not subscribed then do click my floaty face to subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll see you somewhere by a lake, up a tree, in a bush, somewhere with me. I'll see you next time.